Okay, hello again. Right, um, I just want to revisit the SD Quattro. Um, you know, this this is uh, the one I bought, which is um, a few couple of weeks ago now, and and you see my videos on that. Um, now I sent one back, which was. Uh, one of my last videos and I told you I wasn't particularly happy with it um, anyway I've been doing a bit more research on these cameras about when they come out which they didn't all come out that long ago really in, in photography terms um, they weren't very what you would call successful because they're all based on a, a completely different sensor and this one has what they call a Fuvion sensor um, you can read about that on more online if you want. I think Sigma hope you, we're kind of hoping these were going to take off um, and maybe take over the biosensors that are in most digital cameras. Obviously that never happened because unfortunately they do fall down in several areas. They certainly don't fall down in image quality and... Um, they certainly don't, <laughs> Sigma certainly, they don't fall down in build quality. Their, their build quality is second to none. Um, and I'll include Leica in that. Their image quality is second to none. Um, but unfortunately they are very slow. They're very slow, poor focusing. There aren't many focusing points. Uh, the focusing is slow. Uh, they're terrible in low light. And, I, you know, if they could have just somehow <sighs> made them top quality low light cameras, I think they would have been more, very, much more successful, even with all the other faults. If they could have just managed that one, I, I, I think that was probably their biggest downfall. They would have had to have upped their game in other areas as well. Um... But um, they're certainly lovely sensors, even with their faults. And and as I say, th this is, I've got to honestly say, this is the nicest camera I've ever held. And it's the best built camera I've ever held. And, you know, I mean, I've been keeping cameras for like 20 odd years now. I mean, I've had off and on times in all that time but I've had Pentaxes, Olympus you name it I've had it uh, in fact it, the only thing I always avoided was Sony cameras funny enough um, I, I, I don't avoid them now but I always did um, that I'll go into uh, another time but as I say these started off with the SD Merrells which they did uh, the one, two, and three, and I think they were really, really slow. These were the first Fuvian cameras, and then they brought out four more, which were the funny shaped ones, like the one I showed you um, in a video that I did last week, which I bought and sent back. Which I might add, I think I probably didn't give it a much enough time. Because I looked at one of the photographs I took with that, and it was, again, the image quality was exceptional. Um, so, I, you know, maybe I shouldn't have sent it back so quickly. But then, and now I look back and I kind of think, well, I've got this. I've got this one. Um, so what do I really need? I, th I think the appeal to that was the unusual shape. Because I'm not really getting anything more from that camera unless I wanted that specific focal range obviously with this you can add um, by lenses um, I, I, and I've seen a couple I've seen the 18 to 35 the Sigma 100 to 100 uh, 550 to 100 1.8 um, that's a tempted proposition, but they're still quite expensive. And I'm, I was just thinking, if I decided six in six months or a year's time, and you never know with me, um, that 
I decided oh, I've, I've had enough of this, you know, and you, you purchase those lenses now, what are their resale values going to be? Because the problem are, is, is that um, these cameras were never popular. They never really, the Fuvian sensor never took off. The, these cameras never took off. Um, it's only people like me, people that are very methodical, that like taking their time. Um, you know, some, maybe somebody like a landscape photographer. I guess landscape photographers are the type of people that would buy these cameras more than anybody else. Um, and I'm not a landscape photographer. I've never really done landscape photography in, a, in any meaningful way. Um, but, and, and I'm not saying these are exclusively landscape. You can do other things, you know, anything that doesn't move very much. These are going to be good options. But what, where, where do we go with these? Where do I go? Well, I, I still don't know whether I would add another lens to this. I, th I think I need to keep it for a little bit longer. Make sure it's going to be something I'm going to keep for some time. And then I may think about maybe adding a lens. Like the 18 to 35 or the 50 to 1. But... Uh, if I did that, I would have to remember that this is quite a bulky lens with a 30mm 1.4. You stick a bigger lens on there and you really are talking about quite some bulk. Because um, it's no lightweight and it's certainly not small. Um, so, I don't know. I'll see what the future holds. But certainly, I have no complaints about the image quality. I will... I. Probably, I'm actually going to Mauritius um, next month. So I may well take this with me just so I can get some landscape photographs and see how they come out. That might be an interesting... Uh, yeah, it would be interesting. And, and that may give me a better idea as to... Because the problem with here is... Uh, we don't always have the weather, do we? Um, and you want to go somewhere nice and, uh, you know, to get some decent landscape um, photographs. Um, so your you camera can be a bit limited here as to when I would use this. So we'll just have to see where it goes. But, you know, I mean, if you are a landscape photographer or you're into land, then I would, I really would highly recommend getting one of these. Now, you wouldn't regret it because the images that you that come out of it are incredible, and it's such a beautiful camera to hold. Um, but I will keep an eye on the others because I, I still, I, I still like the, that unusual shape of that fifty-one. Uh, 2.8 so I will keep an eye but I just I sometimes think if, if they're slower than this then that makes them even more limited you are literally I think they are more limited to really tripod work I mean this you can take photographs without a tripod I'm not sure with those others that you will so that makes them even more limited than this which makes me wonder about the price. What do you want to pay for a camera that's so limiting? And at the moment, they're fairly expensive. I mean, they on eBay they tend to be going anything from five twenty-five up to around eight hundred pounds. Many of them being in Japan. I mean, obviously this that's where they originate. So that's probably where you're going to find most. But as I say, I found a couple that were under £400 in the past couple of weeks. So I might just, you know, keep an eye out on eBay. If the right deal comes along, I'll pull the trigger. And if I do, then I will do another video on it. But, um, you know, there, there is information on these. If you've got any questions you want to ask me, if anybody wants to ask me any questions at all about anything, um then please feel free to put them in the comments um, about these or any other cameras. Or I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, just ask away.
but you know, I, I've put, I've, I've, I've done this to put these cameras out there, bring them to people's attention. I'm sure there's an, a lot of, a lot of people that have never heard of them, never set their eyes on one, and I really do recommend them, even though they're not going to be for everybody. You, a lot of people will get some vast, great enjoyment out of them. So, there you go. Anyway, till the next one.